Okay, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install the piston in the crankcase. I previously put this timing wheel back in and I've got quite a bit of oil in there just to make sure these parts stay nice and lubricated. You can see it's, it's coming out here. Um, basically what I'm going to do is some of this oil that has dropped out, I'm just going to kind of roll this piston in it and get a little bit of lubrication on that. Now, if you recall, I did mark my piston where the front was. And since this is the front of the engine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the connecting rod all the way to the front. I'm just going to kind of drop this in here and making sure that I didn't change where that ring gap was. I don't think that's really going to be a big issue though. But I do want to know where it is and I'm just going to use a couple of toothpicks here to, because as you can see right now the ring is not compressed into the ring seat in the piston. So I'm just going to use these toothpicks to kind of push that ring into the piston and you can see if you push it in there it just kind of drops right into place. So I can pretty much leave this as it is now. I'm not going to mess around with it too much more. I can go ahead and actually put the head back in on top too once I get the valves installed. I've got the parts of my head here that I've uh, cleaned up and they're basically ready for reassembly. wanted to show you how I've cleaned this head up. Looks pretty much basically brand new. Now, I know I said I was going to soak this exhaust valve in acetone, which I did do, but it didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, throughout these videos, you've heard me mention maybe 3200 grit emery cloth or sandpaper, and what I mistakenly was saying several times was triple lot steel wool. Uh, what I really meant to say in those instances is I often use quadruple lot steel wool, which is four zeros. It's about the finest steel wool you can get. <clears throat> and I'll use that on hardened metal pieces. And these valves are very hard steel. Um, this exhaust valve, what I did was I soaked it and I just used a razor blade and I just kind of scraped off the carbon there. Uh, and then with a piece of this very, very extremely fine 3200 grit sandpaper or emery cloth, I just kind of rolled it on there. Now this is uh, this fine a grit of sandpaper is just some scraps I had left over from when I painted a motorcycle fuel tank. And the only other thing I did to it was just very lightly I would hold it against the seating area and just kind of rotate this valve just to make sure that the actual seating area of the valve is nice and clean. You can see that it's nice and clean there. Now, like I said, these are hardened steel parts, so the only thing this is going to take off is the carbon on there. It isn't going to come close to even changing the shape or distorting this uh, this valve at all. In fact, if you run this valve through your fingers like that, it's got very sharp edges, um, so it's going to be it's going to be okay. Now, obviously, here in the head, or the is really the most important part, is you've got beveled and bronze or brass. Uh, valve seats there. You definitely do not ever want to put any kind of steel wool or any kind of abrasive material and touch this area at all. That's just not a good practice at all. And since this uh, this engine has had great compression, there's no need for me to mess with that at all. In fact, I really didn't even need to, uh, to deal with the exhaust valve. It was fine as it was, but just since I'm going through the steps of cleaning this, I just figured I'd just uh, go ahead and clean that up. So next I'll start putting these pieces together here.